earthquake swarm on the west coast as the Cascadia subduction zone fault awakens. This is besides the 11 earthquakes that we had just a few days ago. The biggest one being a 5.6. We just had today more earthquakes, one of 4.8 in the undersea area off Oregon and another one Baja California of 4.3 magnitude. So it's not just a Cascadia, it's also the San Andreas Hayward Fault areas because of the fact that they're so close to each other. These are definitely, definitely from what the geologists say, going to have an effect on each other. They are on the ring of fire, just as the Yellowstone supervolcano is considered to be on the ring of fire. It's not that far from these fault lines. The swarm of earthquakes ranging from 3.2 to 5.6 are rattling the floor of the Pacific Ocean near the California-Oregon border. The U.S. Geological Survey said the swarm began with a 4.3 magnitude quake with an epicenter in the fault zones located in the undersea Gorda ridges. That quake was followed by tremblers measuring 5.2, 3.4, 4.3, Three point two, four point three, and the largest being at five point six, and we had even more after that. Now there are talks about the big one coming. Earthquakes off the west coast could eventually trigger a global event, from what the geologists are saying. The string of recent earthquakes off the west coast, as we said, ranging from magnitude two point eight to five point six with the other two today from Oregon all the way to Baja, California, could help trigger the earthquake colloquially known as the big one. The geologists have been predicting that we would have an earthquake over 7 Richter San Andreas in the next 30 years. And as far as the Cascadia subduction zone is concerned, the Canadians are already preparing their residence on the west coast of the British Columbia, Vancouver area of a big one in the next 50 years. Now, we don't know how prepared people are and uh, these types of earthquakes would definitely give tsunamis. The map provided by the US Geological Survey highlighting the 11 recent earthquakes occurring on the seabed of the Juan de Fuca tectonic plate, which is approximately six miles below the surface. This plate is described as small by the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network and is fairly active, moving east-northeast approximately 1.6 inches every year. Up to now, the USGS has not issued any warning over this spate of earthquake swarms, given the, four, the fairly common nature of the caliber of earthquakes. Don Blakeman, who is a geophysicist at the National Earthquake Information Center, said, Quakes and eruptions spark talks, though, of Yellowstone supervolcano also, eruption, also erupting. Part of this concern surrounding this plate is that it's not a smooth motion, but a motion described as sticky, causing strain to build up until the fault breaks and a few meters of the Juan de Fuca slip under the North American in a big earthquake. The uh, PNSN noted that it would take a lot of slip, that's approximately uh, 10 seconds of meters, over a very large area to generate a magnitude 9 level earthquake that could hit the region, but it also noted that it does not occur approximately, it does occur every approximately 550 years on average. The cause for this concern is what happened when the Juan de Fuca plate eventually submerges under a much larger Pacific plate. For almost 330 years, the plate has continuously been pushed down, an activity that will eventually lead to be pushed under the North American plate, causing the region to sink six feet in the minimum. 
and it may result in one of the largest earthquakes in human history, in human history. If the entire 650 mile long Cascadia subduction zone, which includes the Juan de Fuca plate, were to experience a full rupture, it could not only trigger a nine magnitude earthquake, but of course a tsunami as well. Uh, as we see from the map, the Juan de Fuca plate stretches from North California to British Columbia, and the Cascadia subduction zone stretches from Vancouver Island to Cape Mendocino in California. Recent studies highlighted how vulnerable we are to the proverbial big one. One study last month detailed that there is a 15 to 20 mile long stretch of the San Andreas Fault called the Dermid Ladder Structure that could result in an earthquake with a magnitude of seven or greater, as we said. This newly defined Dermid Ladder Structure is a voluminous right reverse fault zone that broadens across Dermid Hill around rotating domains of regularly spaced left and right lateral cross faults. The research puts the odds at 75% that it would occur in both Northern and Southern California over the next 30 years. The big one has been warned about several times before with the USGS writing extensively on this, including how to use past earthquakes to better predict the future. Of course, a lot of people, whenever they hear this, they say, oh, fear mongering, fear mongering. Well, better safe than sorry. Uh, just keep in mind that, yes, it has not happened for a long time and it's really overdue to happen. I'll leave links below for you for this.